Top-level statements were introduced in C-sharp 9, but they've become a lot more prevalent with .NET 6. And when you do a .NET new application, you might be wondering, where did my program main go? Let's mash on that. Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we are going to don our Sherlock Holmes caps and investigate what happened to the main method? Where did it go? Where did it go? And just to set the scene, let's start by, I have two environments set up here. One's using .NET 5 and another using .NET 6. And we're just gonna create a new console app and we're gonna compare the output of, first of all, the code that gets, gets uh, created as part of that template. And then also like what gets generated inside that DLL that gets compiled by the compiler. So I'm just gonna do, well, first of all, .NET version here, just so that we can see what we're working with. It's .NET 5.0.4.0.2. Then I'll do .NET new console. We'll just create a console application. Nothing too complicated here. And if you've been doing .NET for a while, uh, this is kind of what we're familiar with. We have a using statement at the top, then we have a namespace, and then a class, a program class, and then a static void main method inside of that uh, with our hello world. So. Line nine, that's the, the line that's actually gonna do something. Uh, I'll put hello world to the console. This is, this is the way .NET has been forever, right? So now uh, what I wanted to do is, uh, I'm gonna do a build here, so .NET build. And I have a extension installed here in Visual Studio called IL Spy that allows me to take decompile the uh, any .NET assembly a DLL. So uh, when I open up this little uh, extension section here, I can say add assembly from workspace and it goes and finds all the assemblies in my app. My app is called .NET 5. Uh, so this .NET 5.dll in the bin slash debug folder would be the one to look at. I click on that and it's going to go and decompile it for me. And I can see that there's like this default namespace that's the assembly namespace. And then there's this .NET 5 namespace which matches uh, what we had in program.cs, that's this this one here. If I expand that, I have a program class. And if I expand the program class, you can see that there's a main method in it. So this is basically exactly, it decompiles to exactly the code that was written in program.cs. Nothing too magical going on there. Now let's flip over to .NET 6. So in this environment, Double check that I have the right one here. So this is .NET 6 RC2, uh, release candidate two. And now I'm gonna do a .NET new console. And we'll see that the program.cs file that gets generated here is much, much smaller than mm -hmm. what we're used to seeing. So it's two lines and it, well, three lines, including a new line. And the first <laughs> line is a link to some documentation to help you understand why this file is so small compared to what you're used to. Um, but yeah, it's just that code that used to be on line nine. That's it. Um, so where is that program main? Like what's the, that program main was always the, like by convention, the entry point into our application. Uh, where is it now? It's just gone. So let's see what happens when we compile it and then decompile it with IL spy. So I'm gonna do a .NET build. And then I'm gonna add the assembly here. So in this case, it's trying.net 6.dll is the name of my assembly. I'll click on but like that. there's some naming inconsistencies between your .NET 5 and .NET 6 environments. There sure is. But that's okay. <laughs> it's just a folder name. <laughs> uh, so first thing to notice is that there's no, uh, there's just the default namespace here, the trying.NET 6.dll namespace that gets generated for the assembly. And then within there, there is a program class, which is interesting. And if I click on it, it actually has an assembly or, or uh, attribute that is on that class called compiler generated so that we know that it was something that the compiler actually generated for us. And you can see that it actually did create a main method, although it's not just main, it's got some angle brackets and a dollar sign on it. Uh, interesting, don't really know why that's the case, but uh, ultimately the thing that the compiler ends up generating is more this traditional C-sharp application that we're used to seeing. And that, that's often, not always, but often the case with these new uh, new versions of, or new features within versions of C-sharp is that 
it's the compiler that ends up just generating some code for us. So it, in this case, gets rid of uh, a lot of the ceremony around creating that new program uh, within it for, in this case, console application, where we have that program main method, and it just kind of generates it for us at compile time instead of having us actually have those artifacts within our C sharp uh, file ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's basically how async and await are implemented, right? Because right. they just generate a big old state machine yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. So, not always the case, but often the case with, with features. Um, there are some features where they do actually make changes to the, uh, the, the runtime and the language at the same time to support all these things. Um, and other times it's just compiler tricks that are generating code for us behind the scenes. Uh, so that the shape of this program main that gets generated for us, uh, it can change depending on the code that exists in your program CS file here. So if I were to also include like some async code in here, you mentioned async await. Uh, if I were to do like task.delay for some period of time. And is, then... is there an async version of console.write? Oh, is there? That'd be weird because no, okay. no, I don't think so. Not for console right line. No. Um, okay, so if I do a .NET build again, and I'm gonna just unload this because I know I've had some issues with weird caching going on with IL Spy, but we'll see if it actually loads the newly generated version. Looks like it did. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so this, oh, there's that state machine that you were talking about, Simon. If you're ever interested in what Whew, async yeah. await does for you. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to write that. It's, it's a thing. Sure it's a time saver. Certainly not understandable code if you were to have that sprinkled all through your application. Um, okay, so it is caching this again here, but if I dig down into the details of it, you can see that the main method is now an async task instead of just a static void main. Um, so it, it recognized that there was an await there and generated the appropriate uh, return type on my main method to make it async. Yeah, I'm interested this is a private static method. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is interesting. So if we toggle back to our .NET 5 environment, it was, well, it's also private static. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's an internal class because it doesn't specify public on it and it doesn't have a, a modifier on the main method either. So that is in fact a private method Okay. on an internal class. Interesting. Hmm. Some I think there was, a, there. there was a time when this was generated as public static main. Yeah, well, I mean, I would already always have written it as public static, and but maybe I've been doing it wrong for years. I want. I feel like that changed at some point along the way. It became private. Yeah, I mean, I just remember from like back in the days of writing Java that it was a public method. Now, I, yeah, me too. Twenty years ago, so it's possible <laughs> that things have changed in the last twenty years. I mean, not in Java, right, but in .NET. Good point. So I think that solves that mystery at least of where did my program main go? Turns out it's still there. You just don't have to write it. Excellent. I love it. Saves us a little bit of time, a little bit of code ceremony, more approachable for people coming into this as a brand new language, uh, which I certainly can't fault the team for developing. All right. Well. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us on today's episode. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye.